What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Yeehaw or Yeena, the show where I listen to new country music and tell you whether I think it's good, Yeehaw, or not so good, Yeena. And there's a whole gradient in between. Gradient, my favorite word. Um, there's a bunch of songs. As you guys are watching this, I'm actually in Nashville taking some meetings, taking some names. And uh, so, so if they're not perfectly up-to-date songs, you know, just whatever. I shot this last week. Uh, let's get into it. First up is Long Neck Way to Go by Midland featuring John Park. This song is an upbeat jam. I absolutely love it. You got all those Eagles harmonies that Midland is so good at. Kind of with the twang of John Party added in on top of it. But the most interesting musical feature of this song to me is that you got those kind of like cool slidey electric guitar kind of, I don't know. I always say woozy when I'm talking about Midland and that's how it feels to me. It's like the Eagles crossed with Mike and the Moon Pies. But there's this banjo going all through the back of this song that gives it such a fun energy. Way to go different you don't usually hear a banjo in this context I really like it and I think the like the music and like the voices and the harmonies on this song are more interesting than the words it's just kind of like you know I I hadn't been, drank enough yet to get over this thing so that's kind of like you know it's it's sweet that you got this little lyric of a long neck way to go like instead of just a long way to go but the music's cooler here so I'm going to give this a light yeehaw and if this isn't the single, after the failure of Sunrise Tells the Story, I feel like it should be two to two step. After that, we got Ingrid Andrews with two new songs. One's called Good Person. But I'd stop for a stranger who's falling apart. And one is called Seeing Someone Else. I think you're seeing someone else. Yeah, we're from the same Ingrid Andrus, she's got this song out right now with Sam Hunt called Wishful Drinking, and I feel like it's very notable for just being like, that's how she delivers the, the words on it. She, to me, just like so wants to be a pop vocalist, and I feel like as soon as she kind of really happens, she'll leave country in a second. And um, and her music's just like not country whatsoever. It's to me, she's just a pop artist. And when I hear any of these songs, I'm like, why is this necessarily country music? Uh, like every country artist that you you hear coming up when they go on radio interviews or something, they'll be like, oh, I love Laney or I love the band Camino because a lot of country artists don't like country music. You know, her first album I thought was actually kind of like luxurious and good. Um, I said the same thing then. I was like, this really isn't country, but she's a good songwriter. And I feel the same way about these songs. Like, Good Person, to me, sounds almost like an Imogen Heap song. The more interesting lyric of these two songs, to me, is seeing someone else. Maybe it'd be better. Maybe it'd be worse if I had someone to hate. Uh, she, you, you think it's this guy that's cheating on her. And she's like, I think you're seeing someone else. And as the chorus comes around, you realize she's saying, like, you're not seeing me the way I see myself. I think you're seeing this girl that I used to be, and that's not who I am anymore. That's a cool lyric. That's a really good lyric. It's just not a country song. And so these get from me a ye not at all country. Um, it's just sort of like kicking them out <laughs> of, the whole, of the whole system. After that, we got Kane Brown with his new one, Like I Love Country Music. Baby, I love you like I love country music. Now, Kane Brown has kind of been on a pretty good streak for Kane Brown and for me. You know, I've never really liked him all that much. I really despise songs like Lose It and whatever is Marshmallow. One thing, right? Um, but lately, he's had songs like Whiskey Sour where I'm like, that sounds really good. Even One Mississippi, I know it was on my worst video last year just for kind of stealing the conceit of One Margarita, but... Even that's like a little a bit of a cut above for like the worst pop country. Like I Love Country Music is kind of like a step down from Whiskey Sour, I would say. It is definitely a Frankenstein song, although it is not trying to cleverly weave in so many song titles. It's just kind of name dropping Alan Jackson and Chattahoochee and I Feel Like a Brand New Man after listening to Brooks and Dunn and saying Johnny and June, but it does have this throwback sound to it that you wouldn't necessarily expect from Cam Brown. It's almost like a Brooks and Dunn record in that it's very like stompy. They were really almost controversial when they debuted for being 
all about dancing and people it's like oh what is this like stupid trashy pop music that people just want to line dance to uh, and that's a little bit how this is. It's got like a heavy percussive backbone to it. It feels a little bit like some of the cheesier Garth moments, but there is this sort of organic instrumentation to it. It doesn't feel like some EDM DJ is just snap tracking his way through this. But I think the lyrics are like not that interesting. It feels very Vegas to me. And so I'll give it, uh, you know, nothing remarkable to say about the vocals. Let me just give it like a, a yee. The next song is from an artist that is new to me named Carter Faith. It's called Greener Pasture. I'm putting this in here because my buddy Connor was like, you gotta listen to this song. And I went to Spotify, it had a bunch of streams and I see that she's now getting to play at the Opry. I went and stalked her social media because I really freaking like this song. Greener Pasture is a cool track. She's got, I don't know how to describe her voice. Um, I really don't. It uh, may be a little bit like Ingrid Andrus is, but then the feel of the music is very country, and it definitely has some of that, like, Texas country sound to it. Maybe that's just I'm thinking that because the lyrics are referencing this cowboy that's uh, already passed El Paso, and she is singing in this song about how this, this cowboy is always going to look for a greener pasture. I was just his Texaco stop on the side of the road, but... She goes up into her falsetto a few times on the chorus in a way that weirdly reminds me almost of Martina McBride on that song, I Love You. This is maybe a more somber version of it, but I just think this song is lovely and it's a really cool introduction to Carter Faith. I don't, I mean, I don't know a thing about her other than she has blonde hair and she sings this song, Greener Pasture, that I think is really good. Um, and she's got, gosh, who, she's got a good tone. I can't compare her to anyone, like Cat Hasty or something. I'm, I'm trying to think of people from TikTok. It's really a clear tone and, and, and her vocal gets the shine on this, but cool song, very cool song. So yeehaw. After that, it's Zach Bryan and Something in the Orange. To you, I'm just a man, to me you're all I I know Zach Bryan has also dropped Open the Gate, but you know, he's dropping a bunch of songs and this album's gonna have a bunch of songs. 34 songs. Anyway, there's a lot of songs coming. Um, but Something in the Orange is certainly the one that has become the crowd favorite ahead of the release. And I totally get, I, I just completely get it. This song is so beautiful, it's so haunting. Uh, the way that, th this song has big dynamics in it. And the, I love how stark it is in those moments where it's like, to you, I'm just a man. Uh, but to me, you're all I am. That's what Zach says. And he's, it, he's just drawing this uh, comparison between how she feels about him and how he feels about her. And he's looking into a sunset uh, and he's just like, something in the orange tells me we're not done. But then also when he's looking into that orange, just something is telling him they are done. And, and it's just this weird, uh, I don't know, I like that phrase, something in the orange. It, it's not necessarily drawing out the picture for you of, oh, there's someone looking at the sky, but you can figure that out yourself. And uh, that's just kind of his poetic writing style. I really like this song, and I'm excited to hear the album. All 34 songs of it, but this song gets a yeehaw. Then we got two songs from Morgan Wallen. The first is Thought You Should Know, and the second is You Proof. I guess I'll start with Thought You Should Know. I love this song. Of all the songs that Morgan's been dropping lately, absolutely, this is my favorite of them. I think it is the best lyric, and I think it's the prettiest melody, and I think the kind of nonchalant way that he's saying, like, he, he's talking to his mother, saying, like, I thought you should know. It really, there's something very guyish about that um, sort of sidestepping intimacy where you're really being vulnerable and then you kind of uh, brush it off with, I just thought you should know. This song was actually co-written with Miranda Lambert, which is cool because it reminds me so much of her song, What About Georgia, on this very record. That's my favorite Miranda Lambert song ever. She says, are you the man you thought you'd be by the time that you turned 33? Are you still the bullet in your daddy's gun? Don't forget, boy, you're your mama's only son, and she's at home, and she's been praying for you. So what about Georgia? 
I love that lyric, and I feel like this song has such a similar energy. And so Miranda's really good at thinking about, uh, as, a, as a man is an adult, is he making his mom proud? And I just, man, the song's so pretty. Huge yee I thought you should know. However, you prove. Yeah, I need something you prove. Oh, I need something you prove you might be my least favorite Morgan song ever. I don't like You Proof at all. I don't like that boop, 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 boop sound after the chorus. I don't like the trap beat going all through it. Um, it reminds me of how I felt about Morgan like very early on where before he was kind of being more consistent. Um, this is like the style that I ain't such a big fan of. Very overproduced and poppy. And I think the lyric is, it's actually somewhat clever talking about how like the whiskey don't mean Jack. That's clever, and he needs something stronger. He needs something you prove because that was the strongest substance he's ever had. That's all well and good, but it's not like the smartest thing in the world. I just think like the sound of it, it's just, I gotta give it a full on ye nah. Next up is Caroline Jones and her song, Being a Woman, parentheses, is like being the sun. Being a woman's like being the sun. Now, I actually don't even think this is a single. I think this is more a bonus release, but Caroline Jones is someone relatively new on my radar. She has this minor hit that's kind of been floating around the 40s, 30s on the chart right now on country radio called Come In. Um, it's totally released independently. She's not on a major label, but she is just like, she seems like a big star. I mean, the video is very like highly produced. She's beautiful. She tours with the Zac Brown Band, she's an incredible guitar player. Uh, her album that I listened to, I don't know how to say it, I think it's called Antipodes. It's got, it, it, it's diverse musically. It's like very poppy in some sections. Uh, it's more country in others. But this song, Being a Woman, that she released, uh, it's like my, my, my freaking favorite thing she has put out as she has been on my radar. Super bluegrassy. It's definitely a bluegrass track. There's not like a big drum behind it. And it's just about kind of her thinking about what being a woman is like and the kind of um, heightened emotions that can control a room and the way they can be nurturing. But she describes herself as having fire for hands. It's this like kind of very honest window into femininity. I guess I'll say it's honest without, you know, I'm not a girl. I can't necessarily say she's exactly right about those things. But from what I observe, there's like a lot of truth in this song and it's very self-reflective and cool and the harmonies on it are beautiful. I sent it to a bunch of girls I know that are new moms and none of them were offended. They all said they liked the song a lot. So um, I freaking like the song a lot too. Caroline's just someone I'm intrigued by. So um, love this song, yeehaw. Then we got Riley Green's new track, Hell of a Way to Go. I'd be sitting on a lake like glass, kitchen, large mouth bass, just my boy. I'm such a freaking broken record when it comes to Riley Green tracks. I feel like I'm always saying the same thing, which is, damn, I like how this sounds, and eh, I'm fine on the lyrics. This is another one of those, like, man, I just want to go out like a good Southern boy type songs, and I, they, they don't do a lot for me. Not just because I don't relate, but just because I'm, I'm looking for a story, not necessarily branding. And I should say, you know, I'm being unfair. I should say that I think this song does have some story. It's a guy... He's talking to his grandpa. I think it's his father, actually, that he's talking to. And he's, like, describing how he wants to go out one day. And he talks about catching largemouth bass and maybe being on the 50-yard line or watching Alabama, uh, being on a front porch swing. And that's, to me, the chorus is where I'm just like, come on, we've done this before. But uh, there is some narrative. There is some narrative. Uh, but... I'll give it a yee. I'll give it a strong yee. Because it does sound super nice. I love Riley's neo-traditional sound. And sometimes, sometimes love the writing. But not always. And then we got Nate Smith with Whiskey on You. Have y'all noticed there's a weird trend in songwriting at the moment of not wasting whiskey on some girl? We had... Uh, Waste of a Whiskey Drink by Gary Allen. We had Ain't Worth the Whiskey by Cole Swindell. And now we got Whiskey on You by Nate Smith where he's like, I ain't not, I'm not going to waste another drop of whiskey on you. Basically, like, it, they're these kind of like bitter breakup songs. However, this one is 
sort of a banger. Like this is this is like the goodness that pop country can be. And he's got a great voice. He's got a great voice and the dynamics of uh, there's kind of a shimmer on the verses. He kind of has a little bit more of a scratchy voice. Billboard just did an article on people with sandpaper voices. And I was like, hey, I called that with the whole thing I was talking about with Bailey Zimmerman a few videos ago. He's kind of got one of those voices and I've seen this guy live. He can really freaking belt. But the verses really work and then there's like the wall of sound as I like to describe it that comes in at the chorus. But it kind of works in this case. It feels almost like a, like a Luke Combs track. Who do we think wrote this? Let's see. Lindsey Rhymes, Nate Smith, Russell Sutton. I don't know who those people are. Um, I mean, Nate is obviously the singer, but that, those are some fresh names to me. I, I think like this song is kind of loud and kind of dumb, but it just sounds so freaking catchy. And the whole like light them up, knock them down. Is that what they say in whiskey glasses? Light them up, put them up, put them up, put them up, put them up. Knock them back, knock them back, knock them back, knock. I bet you they were just like, let's mimic that. I hadn't even thought of that, but I bet that's what they're doing there. Well, that freaking works. I guess it worked on me because I'm going to give this the lightest. Yeehaw. I'm out of time and I need to get this video done, but geez, there's so many I want to recommend. Here are things I'm going to recommend to you. May Estes, Thinking About Cheating. Thinking about cheating. Colby Aircuff, uh has a new song called Bad Day to Be a Beer. But it's a bad day to be a beer. Uh, Jenna Paulette has a song called El Paso. Pulling me back to El Paso. Uh, there's new stuff from Tammy Nielsen, Braxton Keith. I haven't even listened to the new Drew Parker. I didn't even listen to the Jelly Roll song. There's a new Jaden Hamilton song. There's a lot of music, guys. If, if you don't follow Country Central, my enemies, Country Central. Uh, they always do these this this post that's very useful. I must admit, like all the new music coming out every week, and that post is so overloaded with music, it's actually made me feel better about not covering everything. You're like, it's literally impossible. So, why am I worried? 